Hi, I'm Zena. I'm a software engineer on the Python language tooling team at Meta. We work on a type checker, ID extension, and language server for Python called Pyrefly. And right now we're working on supporting some of the widely used third-party frameworks. Today, we'd like to share our experimental support for Pydantic, which is a popular Python library that leverages type hints to parse and validate data at runtime. Our goal is to also validate your Pydantic code as you type. Uh, this means that you get familiar IDE features on your editor, such as red squiggles, autocomplete, and type information on hover. Firefly now supports this functionality out of the box for Pydantic based code. Note that this support is experimental and we're constantly taking feedback and improving. So if you have any feature requests or feedback, you can click this link in the description and leave us a comment. In this video, we're gonna talk about um, a brief intro to how Pydantic validates data and then how we support it so that it can improve your development experience. And finally, how do we compare to MyPy's Pydantic plugin? Before we begin, if you wanna follow along, you can click the link below to our Pydantic documentation, which contains a starter project. It'll give you Pyrefly, Pydantic, and some examples to try. And if you're using an IDE, don't forget to follow the IDE setup instructions on our website. Okay, so let's go to our editor. I used the setup we just talked about and went to configdict.py. So here we have a simple Pydantic model that uses configdict to specify that the model is frozen. So you can hover over configdict to understand what it is. You can go to the definition and read the code. You can get type information if you hover on the data. Of course, in this specific example, we can see the values of the program easily, but in other cases, type hints can help. We will also get auto completion. We can see here a list of completion suggestions. So here we're creating a model with a field X and we set it to a value of 42 and we're freezing the model via the frozen keyword. So now this model is immutable. Let's initialize it and try to mutate the value. Right away, we can see red squiggles with an error that says, cannot set field X, this field belongs to a frozen Pydantic model. And indeed, if we run this example with Python, it will fail at runtime. So let's try it. And we can see that we get a validation error. And so our goal there was to give you that immediate feedback before you ran your program. Of course, static analysis is not a substitute for running the program like we just did because we cannot check everything statically. Some information is only available at runtime. And Pydantic leverages this information by offering us two modes of validation, lax mode and strict mode. So lax mode is the default. In this mode, Pydantic allows runtime coercion. So what does this mean? Let's go back to our editor. Uh, so now we're in basic.py. Here we're defining a class user with a name of type string and an age of type int. Then we're instantiating the class. Notice that we're passing a string 30 instead of the number 30. And as we know, the string 30 is runtime coercible to an integer. But since we're in lax mode, Pydantic will allow it. So let's actually run the program in Python. And we can see that it works. In contrast, in strict mode, that's not a valid program. Pydantic here enforces that types have to match. So how do we tell Pydantic that we want strict mode? It depends on the program. Um, in this particular example, we add the strict keyword. Right away, we can see that Pyrefly complains in the IDE. It says that argument literal 30 is not assignable to parameter age with type int in function user in it. And indeed, if we run this program in Python, we will get a validation error in Pydantic pointing to that specific location. Let's compare Pyrefly to MyPy's Pydantic plugin. MyPy's plugin has several configuration options to control checking strictness. So if you want certain behaviors, you would set them up in your MyPy configuration file. 
As we saw, Pyrefly works differently. It doesn't rely on external config files. We work on balancing giving you type information without being too restrictive, and we deduce that from reading your program. So how do you get started using Pydantic and Pyrefly together? All you have to do is install Pydantic, install Pyrefly, write your Pydantic code as usual, then run Pyrefly on your code. That's it from me. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, this feature is still experimental at the time of filming. So please give it a try and let us know how we can improve it. You can drop a comment below, join our Discord or open a GitHub issue. We'll put links in the description. Thank you and happy coding.